Rejoice from soft fans rejoice Elden Ring has emerged from the darkness and as of right now will not end up as vaporware They will fight and they will die Stranger things have happened, but let's pretend that everything is perfect, at least for the moment. After the initial announcement back in 2019, not much news was released about the newest IP from the legendary Dark Souls developer. Lots has happened since then, but now we've got a gameplay trailer, a release date, and a whole bunch of new details. So let's get right into the question at hand. What do we know about Elden Ring? More than a lot of folks ever thought we would, that's for sure. The whole project seemed to be shrouded in secrecy from the start, with the initial announcement featuring a few weapons, and of course, the promise of a collaboration between Miyazaki and George R.R. Martin. Dead men, dragons, and dragon queens. Whatever stands in our way. That second name there should be enough to scare folks into believing it would be years before we even got a smidgen of new information. Power is a curious thing. But here we are, a couple of years down the line, with brand new stuff to talk about. From Software has been testing out some new concepts over the past few years, following the enormous success of their Dark Souls franchise. The high fantasy, medieval themed world of their Souls games were left behind in favor of the Victorian London style Yharnam and Bloodborne, and the post Sengoku period land of Ashina and Sekiro. However, Elden Ring seems to be returning to a style similar to Demon Souls and Dark Souls. It may be a different story, but the aesthetics are similar. <laughs> what the? Yeah! In fact, it appears that the theme of undead rebirth makes a return, as is common in FromSoft games. The tarnished will soon return. George R. R. Barton takes the lead on storytelling, and it has been revealed that he's responsible for the overarching mythos of Elden Ring. So even if he didn't write the entire script and choose every action himself, he's definitely a driving force behind this story. Hidetaka Miyazaki, president of FromSoft and regular game director, has himself stated his love for Martin's work in the past, so it should be interesting to see how all of this plays out. Themes of ascension and royalty remain, although details about the story itself remain quite vague for the time being. Not that FromSoft stories are ever straightforward, but you get what I'm saying. Bandai Namco put out the following quick outline in their latest press release. The golden order has been broken. Rise, tarnished, and be guided by grace to brandish the power of the Elden Ring and become an Elden Lord in the lands between. In the lands between, ruled by Queen Marika the Eternal, the Elden Ring, the source of the Erd Tree, has been shattered. Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring known as the Great Runes, and the mad taint of their newfound strength triggered a war, the Shattering. A war that meant abandonment by the Greater Will. And now the guidance of grace will be brought to the tarnished who were spurned by the grace of gold and exiled from the lands between. Ye dead who yet live, your grace long lost, follow the path to the lands between beyond the foggy sea to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. An epic journey for sure. I'm sure in the coming days we'll learn even more about what exactly the Elden Ring is and what significance it holds in this world. Queen Marika the Eternal will play a large role and we've seen plenty of spooky monsters that may be her offspring or simply creatures that roam this shattered world. Plenty of Norse influence here too it seems. Like I mentioned before, the theme of returning to a higher state is back. Tarnished seems to be a state similar to Unkindled or undead or even hollowed. Foul tarnished. In search of the Elden Ring. Somehow the player character has ended up as an unfortunate lesser than and must continually prove themselves in order to complete their quest. Classic from Soft. It seems that the world is much more wide open than ever. Dark Souls is known for its interlinked world, and it looks like Elden Ring is going for a similar vibe, but it's on next gen systems, so expect something super expansive. This idea that things are going to be enormous is compounded by the addition of mounts. That's right, now players can traverse the world atop a mighty steed and engage in combat while riding on horseback. This should provide all sorts of new options across the board, and we'll see how it impacts gameplay overall. 
wall. You can use this mount to travel to six different regions announced, from grassy plains to lush forests to dank dark swamps. It will definitely have that FromSoft feel, but potentially with more variety than ever. There will even be weather cycles and time of day progression. All in all, the world of Elden Ring could feel very real and very lived in. It seems that each area will allow you to approach it differently too, meaning that folks can attempt to use different strategies for different foes. The order in which you tackle enemies could be up in the air as well. So more than ever, stealth is an option. And get this, you can jump. I know, crazy right? Craziest of all though is the addition of up to 4 player multiplayer. That's right, we're not just summoning one friend at a time anymore, you can bring in 3 compatriots to take on whatever challenge presents itself. What a world. Of course, there will be plenty of new monsters and bosses to fight in Elden Ring. From what we've seen in the trailer and in promotional images, they're going to be just as insane as stuff we've seen in the past, if not more so. From pot goblins to enormous faces in the dark, there is no shortage of excellent creatures and foes. And of course, the ever present berserk influence is there. Miyazaki loves his fantasy to be dark, brutal, and doom laden. So there you have it. With the latest trailer and a press release, we've learned more about Elden Ring in a couple of days than we have had in the last couple years. It's going to release on Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, PC, PS4 and PS5 on January 21st, 2022. So who's ready? A lowly tarnished. Playing as a lord, I command thee. God, I need to get my hands on a PS5. My PS4 is starting to sound like a jet engine. So, what do you think about Elden Ring? Will you be getting it as soon as it releases? Did I miss any important details? What are you most excited about? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more wary ones from What If Genghis Khan Was Alive Today. Diverse Joe says, I imagine him owning many of the most prestigious areas in New York especially. You think Genghis Khan would be a landlord instead of a warlord? Faison Faisal says, bro would have been the true meaning of menace to society. Oh, no doubt. Comrade Galanai says, remember when he helped Bill and Ted with their history report? Party on dudes. Dale A says, he would be at KFC a lot. I don't know, I could see him being more of a Mary Browns kind of guy. And Iman Rich the Swag Lord says, irrelevant, he's dead. I mean, yeah, he's, he's been dead. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.